anti in terms of the, um, the technology here. Okay, so keep all that in prayer. All right, let me go ahead and pray. That's sort of bless the time. Our mainstay is teaching the Word of God. We're going to do that every single time we meet. We're going to take you through the entire scriptures, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book. And so we're going to begin the book of Numbers, and we're going to do that time. Let me pray. I just want to thank you for your faithfulness to this fellowship. Oh, Lord, we've been in a lot of locations in Echo Park, but Lord, this is the place that you have us now. I pray your blessing over it, Lord, as we kind of just camp out here for a while. I kind of think of like the tabernacle, Lord. You, you move and we follow. And then we, and when you uh, kind of set up camp, we just kind of pitch tent and we rest and we uh, are here now. And so I just pray your blessing over this place as we uh, set up camp here right at the corner of Bonnie Brand Temple Street. Lord, as we uh, now um, open our doors up to all those that would like to come and to see us face to face and to enter into the worship and to the teaching of the word and so i pray where you're anointing upon our time together tonight lord may you uh, be our teacher may we decrease may you increase and may you have a specific word to each one of us lord may this not just be an education but may you reveal yourself in your word i ask these things in jesus name amen, amen. all right the book of numbers when's the last time everybody anybody studied the book of numbers raise your hand okay we got one not too many, right? Now, probably a little bit more than Leviticus. Okay, we just finished Leviticus, and so um, pretty happy about that. You guys stayed with me. We actually increased in size, and so that's kind of a, a work of the Lord, right? We began Leviticus with just a handful, and we ended with a couple handfuls. <laughs> and so we're beginning Numbers, and so if you open your Bible to Numbers chapter 1. Now, as you're kind of finding your way in the book of Numbers, I, I want to quickly go over... Um, this book and so firstly the the title numbers I don't know if you know this but the way the Old Testament books were titled in Hebrew was by their first words okay so in the Hebrew Bible the Tanakh anybody have a Tanakh you shouldn't but if you do that's the Hebrew Bible this book is called Be Midbar which means in the wilderness it's Hebrew in the wilderness and so I want you to notice in verse 1 of chapter 1 of the book of Numbers I want you to read that with me. It says, now the Lord spoke to Moses, what? In the wilderness. In the wilderness of Sinai. And so that's the name of the book in Hebrew, in the Hebrew Bible. This section of Hebrew, of the Hebrew Bible known as the, uh, as the Torah. Torah is the first five books, right? And so in Numbers, which is Be Midbar in the Hebrew Bible, it literally means in the wilderness. And I want you to just note that. In your Hebrew Bible, that's how they would title the books. It would take the first word or first set of words, and that would be the title. And so, in the wilderness is the title of the book in Hebrew. And so, what's the English Bible say? What well, says the book of Numbers, this title Numbers. Now, this is from the Greek title in the translation of the Old Testament, which is Arik Moi, which we get our, our word arithmetic, emphasizing the list of numbers recorded in the book. Numbers. Now, the Latin Vulgate picked up on that and made the Greek title, named it Numeri, which we get our English word numbers, okay? And so both titles, numbers and in the wilderness, when you think about it, they're really good titles, aren't they? Because they are the general descriptors of the book. There will be two numberings, and you're going to have to have a good calculator. Now, they didn't have calculators at that time, but they actually, what, added them up. Two numberings of the people, and in between those two numberings were what? 40 years in the wilderness. So these two titles are really good titles when you think about it. The Hebrew title, In the Wilderness, and the English title, Numbers, or Arithmetic in, in the Greek, right? And so there's two numberings of the people that to add them at the beginning and at the end of Numbers. At the beginning of the 40 years and at the end of the 40 years, but in between is the 40 years of what? Of wandering in the wilderness so these are really good titles and so these help us I think to etch kind of the general telescopic view of the book taking these two titles into consideration now we're gonna first see the first census in our chapters this evening now before we get to the first census I want to take a step back and go over because there's gonna be a lot of arithmetic all right so hopefully you brought your calculator this evening they're gonna add them all up and we're gonna see what they number but before we get to that, I want to take a step back and go over the timeline once again of Israel's journey from Exodus, the Exodus of Egypt, to the entering in of the Promised Land. They're heading to the Promised Land. They're not there yet. 
actually they're not going to get there for a while, even though they should be getting there quite soon. They're going to be leaving Mount Sinai in the book of Numbers. So they should get to the promised land probably within 40 days if they were on their game. But they got off their game and began to wander. And they wandered for 40 years. See, that's the course of the book of Numbers. And so if you're taking notes, you might want to jot down these scriptures. I think these are very important, at least to me, they're important because they help me understand the chronology of the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. If you take these handful of verses together, these verses give you time markers, they're dates. And from these time markers, you see the length of time that they're at every place, okay? Just a handful of scriptures, okay? So these are very important in my mind because it gives us a reference of time as they would leave Egypt and enter the promised land under Joshua. Okay, now, write this down. Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. You can write this in your notes. I'm going to read this to you. Exodus chapter 19, verse 1 says, In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. What does that mean? Let me read that again. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt. The Exodus, right? The book of Exodus. They left Egypt. After three months, that's where they got, that's when they got to the, Mount, the wilderness of Sinai or Mount Sinai. So it's a three-month journey that it took them from Egypt to the base of Mount Sinai. All right, that's recorded right there in Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. Write this down, Exodus chapter 40, verse 17, another important verse. We studied this a while back as we completed Exodus. It says, Exodus chapter 40, verse 17, And it came to pass in the first month of the second year on the first day of the month that the tabernacle was raised up. So, let me read that again. The first month of the second year. This is from the time that they left Egypt. That's where this accounting begins. So the first month of the second year on the first day of the month that the tabernacle was raised up. So let's do our math. From the third month of the first year until the first month of the second year. The third month of the first year was when they got to Mount Sinai until the first month of the second year when that tabernacle was raised up. How many months? Nine months. And so there were nine months at the base of Mount Sinai until the tabernacle was raised up. Okay, it gives us another time marker. They were camped nine months at Mount Sinai before the tabernacle was finished. Now what happened between that time? Well, we studied that, right? He goes up and back, up the mountain. Not just twice, to get the law twice, but multiple times. But then finally, right, they start to build the tabernacle and they finish the tabernacle. And that's recorded in Exodus chapter 40, verse 17. Now, when we get to the book of Numbers, we're going to read this. Numbers chapter 1, verse 1. Let me read this to you. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. They're still in Sinai. In the tabernacle meeting, he spoke to them, right? On the first day of the second month in the second year, after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel. So, there's about a month that has lapsed between the time that the tabernacle was finished and then the first numbering of the people in Numbers chapter 1, which we're going to read. About one month time has lapsed. And this was the time that the Leviticus took place. And we've noted this. Leviticus was a crash course to the Levitical priests. About a month, maybe up to a month and a half, if you count the 20 days before the numbering, and then the time that they actually left. But one to one and a half months is the duration of Leviticus. So it's a crash course to the Levite priest, how to minister at the tabernacle. We just finished that, okay? Remember that probation period? What happened at the probation period? A couple of Aaron's sons didn't quite make it, right? They were fired. Remember that? And so we see right there, during the time of Leviticus, this very important instruction how the Levites were to minister at the tabernacle, especially the high priest. They were the intermediaries between holy God and sinful Israel. And if they did the wrong thing, what would happen? They would perish. And so they had to learn very carefully and very detailed what to do. Some of them didn't make it. Okay, so we studied that in Leviticus. Now we just got to the end of Leviticus and we see Numbers chapter 1, verse 1, now a numbering of the people. But it's been a month, a month since the finishing up of the tabernacle 
and then the numbering of the people. And during that month was probably where Leviticus was, was taught and took place, okay? Now, Numbers chapter 10, verse 11. I want you to mark this in your notes. We're going to get there in a couple, in a few weeks. Numbers chapter 10, verse 11. Notice it says, notice it says, Now it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month in the second year. So from the numbering of the people to this 20th day of the second month, it's 20 days of the second year, that the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle of the testimony, and the children of Israel set out from the wilderness of Sinai on their journey. Set out to where? Finally, they left Mount Sinai to go to the promised land. Okay? So 20 days have elapsed between the time of the numbering of the people, which we're going to read up in chapter 1 this evening, to the time that they actually left Mount Sinai and started to move out toward the land of Canaan, okay? And so, once again, Leviticus covered a time span of about one to one and a half months. I like to kind of put it this way, probably about 40 days. And the reason I like to do that, because Leviticus is 40 days, Numbers is what? 40 years. It helps me to remember, one to one and a half months, right, maybe 40 days. So I think Leviticus 40 days, Numbers, time span is 40 years. Right? And now, what about Deuteronomy? Have you read Deuteronomy lately? Well, Deuteronomy is after Numbers. And so Numbers is 40 years. That older generation has passed away. The newer generation has come. Now they're encamped on the east side of the Jordan. They're coming up, right? East of the Jordan, going through Moab and Edom, right? And they're going to enter in under Joshua from the east. How long does Deuteronomy take? Well, it's about 40 days when you study it carefully. Forty days are east of the Jordan. And what is Moses doing before he goes to be with the Lord? Another crash course on the law. It's the second giving of the law, right, to that younger generation. Because they were too young to understand the first time it was given 40 years prior. Okay, so you can kind of piece all these things together. And I think, to me at least, it gives me context of time. And as I have context of time, I can kind of understand the parts a little bit better. 40 days around Leviticus. Crash course of the Levitical priest. How to minister at the tabernacle. 40 years in numbers. It took them 40 years to get to the promised land, to enter in. That older generation needed to die away. Except for Joshua and Caleb. And then Deuteronomy, 40 days to learn the law again before they enter in under Joshua. And we have the book of Joshua. Okay, so does that make sense? So look at these verses I just gave you. These are the telescopic kind of view verses that you can start to connect the dots so that we can now understand these books a little bit better because there's a lot of detail in these books. A lot of detail in the book of Numbers, you're going to see. A lot of arithmetic, a lot of addition. And we're going to see it right here in verse 1, chap beginning in verse 1, chapter 1 of the book of Numbers. Okay, so let's begin reading. Numbers chapter 1 verse 1 says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. Now remember, that's the book, name of this book in your Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh, right? Ber Mudah, which means in the wilderness. So in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of meeting on the first day, the second month, in the second year, after they had come out of the land of Egypt. This was one of our time markers I just gave you, okay? Very important verse. Verse 1 in Numbers chapter, Numbers chapter 1. Very important verse. It gives us a time marker, okay? And this is the reference right there in verse 1, saying that to take a, ten, a census, a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel, or numbering, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names. Every male individual. So they're not to number the females. Now, it's not because that he's anti-female God. Don't ever let anybody tell you that. He's numbering the males individually. Why? Because he's numbering on army. Back then in Israel and back, even back in our, in our country, way back, right? The armed services was males. Okay, so he's numbering the males 20 years old and above all who are able to go to war in Israel. He's numbering an army. Okay? You and Aaron shall number them by their armies. Verse 4, and you and with you there shall be a man from every tribe, each one the head of his father's house. And so I want you to notice the purpose of the numbering, again, it is to number all who are able to go to war in Israel. It's an army he's numbering. And it's really kind of a draft. How many remember the draft back in the day? 
Well, draft actually was a numbering of all the men that were able to go into the armed services. That was what the draft was. And this is kind of what it is. All those that would be ready to fight to possess the land. Each family from each tribe. And so following are the names and numbers from each of the tribes of Israel. And we're going to read through these rather quickly. But I'd like you to actually read them so we can get a gist of the detail that is there. There's an exact accounting of the men of war. An exact accounting. Now you think, well, that's kind of boring. But it really isn't. It has to be detailed. You know, I don't know. I, I know Paco was in the armed services. Did they always number the men? Weren't you in the armed services? Somebody was. Yeah? But I, I know some people. Well, um, um, Carlos is in the armed service, right? They number all the men, right? And when they lose a man, that, that's number two. And so there's an exact accounting. Each one is accounted for, right? And so this is exactly why we have the number. We don't want to miss anything. Numbering of the people, numbering of the men. Each man is a valuable life. Amen. And these are men that are going to go to war. Okay? So these are the names of the men who shall stand with you. That is, these are the heads of each of the tribes. From Reuben, Eleazar, the son of Shedur, from Simeon, Shelumiel, I'm going to get a practice in pronouncing these names, the son of Zeresh Shaddai, from Judah, Nashon, the son of Aminadab, verse 5, from Issachar, Nathanael, the son of Zuar, from Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helon, from the sons of Joseph, from Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Amuhod, from Manasseh, Gamaliel, the son of Pedazur. From, verse 11, from Benjamin, Abidan, the son of Gideonai, verse 12. From Dan, Ehiz, Ehiezer, the son of Amishadai, verse 13. From Asher, Pagal, the son of Akram, verse 14. From Gad, Eliasaf, the son of Deul, verse 15. Then from Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Ena, verse 16. These were chosen from the congregation, leaders of their fathers, tribes, heads of the divisions of Israel. Verse 17, and then Moses and Aaron took these men who had been mentioned by name. Verse 18, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month and they recited their ancestry by families, by their father's houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and above. Notice, right? Draft age. 20 years old and above. Each one individually. Verse 19, as the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. Now, verse 20. The children of Reuben, Israel's oldest son, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, every male individual from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Verse 21. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Reuben were 46,500. So if you're taking notes and you want to do the arithmetic here, you can. Okay? Now, from verse... 22, from the children of Simeon, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, of those who were numbered, according to the number of names, every male individually, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Simeon were 59,300. Verse 24, from the children of Gath, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above. All who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Gad were 45,650. So this is a pretty big army when you think about it. Verse 26. From the children of Judah, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above. All who were able to go to war. Verse 27. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Judah were 74,600. Hundred from the children of Issachar, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Verse 29, those who were numbered of the tribe of Issachar were 45,400. Verse 30, from the children of Zebulun, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Verse 31, those who were, were numbered of the tribe of Zebulon were 57,400. Verse 32, from the sons of Joseph, 
the children of Ephraim, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Verse 33, those who were numbered of the tribe of Ephraim were 40,500. Verse 34, from the children of Manasseh, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Verse 35, those who were numbered of the tribe of Manasseh were 32,200. Verse 36, from the children of Benjamin, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Verse 37, those who were numbered of the tribe of Benjamin were 35,400. And from the children of Dan, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Verse 39, those who were numbered of the tribe of Dan were 62,700. You know, as I'm reading these names, I'm just thinking, was God faithful to multiply Egypt? I mean, multiply uh, Israel and Egypt? <laughs> Pretty faithful, huh? Think about it. Remember the Abrahamic covenant? That was the promise. I'm going to give you descendants as numerous as the stars in heaven. Seems like he fulfilled that, huh? For the children of Asher, the, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the numbers, uh, number of names from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Verse 41, those who were numbered of the tribe of Asher were 41,500. And then from the children of Naphtali, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war, those who were numbered of the tribe of Naphtali were 53,400. So a lot of, a lot of men. And notice, it always says those that what? Who were able to go to war. So why are they drafted into this army? To go to war. Who are they going to go to war with? They're going to possess the land. Right? So they have to possess the land and there's going to be battles in the land. And so I want you to think about numbers as kind of a boot camp. Anybody been through boot camp? It's a boot camp. It should have taken 40 days. But you know what it took them? It took them 40 years. It took them 40 days to be prepared, go into the promise, and begin to possess the land. But they what? They lacked faith. And therefore, they wandered the desert for 40 years until God raised up a younger generation to do just that. All right? Verse 44. These are the ones who were numbered, whom Moses and Aaron numbered, with the leaders of Israel. Twelve men, each one representing his father's house. Verse 45. So all who were numbered of the children of Israel by their father's houses from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war in Israel, all who were numbered were 603,550. That's a big army. Now, was that army successful? No. They never entered the land. Why weren't they successful? Lack of faith, huh? They saw giants in the land. They forgot to keep looking at the Lord. They looked at the situation. All these men trained for war, and they never entered in. Verse 47, But the Levites were not numbered among them by their father's tribe. Verse 48, For the Lord had spoken to Moses, saying, only, verse 49, the tribe of Levi you shall not number, nor take a census of them among the children of Israel. But, verse 50, you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, over all the furnishings and over all things that belong to it. They shall carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings. They shall attend to it and camp around the tabernacle, verse 51. And when the tabernacle is to go forward, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall set it up. The outsider who comes near shall be put to death. And so we see what the responsibilities of the Levites are, right? They're all around the tabernacle, right? They're to set it up and take it down. And so they're not going to be numbered for war, are they? They're going to be numbered, what? For ministry. Okay? And we're going to see their numbering next week in chapter 3. Now, verse 52. 
says, the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, everyone by his own camp, everyone by his own standard, according to their armies. Notice he calls them an army, right? Verse 53, but the Levites shall camp around the tabernacle of the testimony, that there may be no wrath on the congregation of the children of Israel. And the Levites shall keep charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. And so they did. So you get the picture here, right? A draft, a big draft. And he's going to prepare them with boot camp so that when they go into the land, they'll know how to possess the land. Okay, now let's go to the next chapter. Numbers chapter 2. So in this chapter, we're going to get Israel's marching orders, right? So he's drafted them. Now he's going to give them their marching orders. The men of war have been numbered in chapter 1, but now they're going to be given their orders in terms of how they go out and in what order they go, how they march out into war, okay? Now, the when will be as the Lord leads. When they're going to go out, that's going to be as the Lord leads. He's going to lead them by pillar of fire at night and a cloud of smoke by day. And as the Lord moved, Israel would follow. When the cloud over the tabernacle moved, the Levites would pack up the tabernacle and all Israel would pack their tents and follow in an orderly Really a marching manner. And when the cloud would rest, then the Levites would set up the tabernacle and all Israel would pitch their tents and rest until the cloud of the Lord moved again. Right? And so the Lord would lead them and they would have to follow the Lord. This was how Israel was to follow the Lord in their move toward the promised land. Now, in terms of how they followed, this is described right here in chapter 2, how they would follow. There was a specific order that the tribes would be positioned around the tabernacle and a specific order that they would pack up and leave and set up and rest. There was an order. Was, everything was done in order. And it reminds me just like the armed services. Everything does is done in order. And these are given right here in this chapter. And so as we read through the chapter, um, you know, I didn't uh, bring a handout, but you might want to, like, if you have a study Bible, what you'll see in a picture is basically all the tribes, three tribes, there's 12 tribes, right? Three, 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 six, nine, twelve. Each of the tribes are surrounding the tabernacle, and it's at a distance from the tabernacle. And then the Levite priests, or the Levitical tribe, they're right around the tabernacle. And so that's how they're situated. And they're moving through the wilderness. And as they're moving through the wilderness, I've heard when some people say, it looks like a cross. It kind of does, right? And the first one to pack up and to move out is the tribe of Judah. They always go to the east. So I want you to notice that. And so picture's worth a thousand words. If you want to look at a picture, I forgot to bring one for the guys to put up uh, a handout. But you can look at that and you see they're all camped out around the tabernacle with the Levitical priest right at the center there. Okay? All right, so verse 1. Let's begin reading. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Every one of the children of Israel shall camp by his own standard beside the emblems of his father's house. They shall camp some distance from the tabernacle meeting. So notice, the segregation is by family within each tribe. And they are to camp some distance from the tabernacle meeting while the Levites would be encamped right around the tabernacle. Okay, now verse 3. On the east side, to the rising of the sun, those of the standard of the forces with Judah shall camp according to their armies. And Nashon, the son of Amminadab, shall be the leader of the children of Israel. Verse 4, and his army was numbered at 74,600. And so notice the rank. There's a rank of the tribes. Not that one is better, but there's a rank. And Judah's at the, at the, at the highest rank right here. There's an order of rank, just like in our armed services. And the leader of the tribe of Judah was Nashon, the son of Amminadab. Verse 5, those who camp next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar and Nethanel. The son of Zuar shall be the leader of the children of Issachar. So you notice the rank even down to the people. Okay? And his army was numbered at 54,400. Then comes the tribe of Zebulun. And Eliab the son of Helon shall be the leader of the children of Zebulun. Verse 8. And his army was numbered at 57,400. All who were numbered according to their armies of the forces with Judah. 186,400. These shall break camp first. So these are all the ones on the east flank, the east side, right? We have three tribes. We have Judah, we have Issachar, and we have Zebulun. They're going to be packing up first. 
Judah is the leader of that, of those three, okay? They're on the east side. And so they shall break camp first. Now on the south side, verse 10, shall be the standard of the forces with Reuben according to their armies. And the leader of the children of Reuben shall be Eliezer, the son of Shedur. Verse 11, and his army was numbered at 46,500. Verse 12, those who camp next to him shall be the tribe of Simeon. And the leader of the children of Simeon shall be Shalumiel, the son of Zerushaddai. Verse 13, and his army was numbered at 59,300. Then comes the tribe Gad. And the leader of the children of Gad shall be Eliasaph, the son of Reuel. Verse 15, and his army was numbered at 45,650. Verse 16, all who were numbered according to the armies of the forces with Reuben, 151,450. So Reuben is the head of that flank on the south, right? And they shall be the second to break camp. So the south side camp, right? It's overseen by Reuben, they're second. So the east side, Judah, they're first. South side, second, that's, that's led by Reuben. Now verse 17. And then the tabernacle of meeting shall move out with the camp of the Levites in the middle of the camps. As they camp, so they shall move out. Everyone in his place by their standards. And so the Levites who oversee the tabernacle, they'll move out next and they'll break camp next. And so you got two flanks, they break camp, and then you have the tabernacle and the Levites, they break camp, and then you have the other two, right? Flanks, they follow. Okay, so you see that the tabernacle is always at the center, center of Israel. Now verse 18. On the west side shall be the standard of the forces with Ephraim, according to their armies, and the leader of the children of Ephraim shall be Elishema, the son of Ahmehud, Verse 19, and his army was numbered at 40,500. Verse 20, next to him comes the tribe of Manasseh, and the leader of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel, the son of Pedu Zur. 21, verse 21, and his army was numbered at 32,200. Verse 22, then comes the tribe of Benjamin, and the leader of the children of Benjamin shall be Abaddon, the son of Gideonai. Verse 23, and his army was numbered at 35,400. Verse 24, all who were numbered according to their armies of the forces of Ephraim, Ephraim is the head, tribe there, 108,100. 108,100, that's a lot. They shall be the third to break camp. Verse 25, the standard of the forces with Dan shall be on the north side according to their armies. And the leader of the children of Dan shall be Ahizir, Ahi. Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai, verse 27, and his army was numbered at 62,700, verse 27. Those who camp next to him shall be the tribe of Asher. And the leader of the children of Asher shall be Pagiel, the son of Akron, verse 28. And his army was numbered at 41,500, verse 29. Then comes the tribe of Naphtali, and the leader of the children of Naphtali shall be Ahira, the son of Enoch, verse 30. And his army was numbered at 53,400, verse 31. All who were numbered of the forces with Dan, 157,600, they shall break camp last with their standards. Okay, so... If you have a picture in your study Bible, it's worth looking, right? What I just described in 29, 30 verses, right? You can look at in a picture and see how that's supposed to be settled there, okay? It's a picture of how they're marching or how they're to march, how to set up camp and how they're to march, okay? And so you can see the standard by which God instructed Israel to move in the wilderness toward the promised land. And this is going to be, as like I said, as they move their boot camp, so to speak. They would be training in the wilderness for when they entered the promised land to possess it from the giants in the land. But unfortunately, as we're going to see in the course of the study of Numbers, a boot camp that was to last 40 days lasted 40 years. Matter of fact, none of them made it through the boot camp except for who? Who are the two? Joshua and Caleb. Out of all these men we just read about, only two made it to boot camp. Pretty sad commentary, huh? 
verse 32. These are the ones who were numbered of the children of Israel by their father's houses. All who were numbered according to their armies of the forces were 603,550. That is a big army. And yet none of them made it, except for two. 603,550 man fighting army. But as I mentioned, what we're going to see, that it wasn't a very strong army. You see, really, here's the, here's, here's the point. It's not the size of the army that makes it strong, is it? It's not the size of the army that makes it strong. What makes an army strong? It's faithfulness to God. Amen. Have you ever read the account of Gideon? Anybody read that? That's the spiritual principle right here. See, the greatest and most powerful army is the one that is committed to the Lord. Amen. It's a spiritual principle that runs throughout Scripture. From these ones right here to Gideon. Gideon's army, remember that? And it goes all the way through to the 144,000 in Revelation 7. It's not numbers, people. It's strength in God. Hallelujah. Strength in God's army has more to do with faithfulness than numbers. Amen. Never forget that. The strength of an army isn't in numbers. It's in faithfulness to God. Verse 33, but the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 34, thus the children of Israel did according to all the Lord commanded Moses. So they camped to buy their standards. And so they broke camp, each one by his family, according to their father's houses. And so next week, chapters 3 and 4, we're going to get the accounting of the Levites, not the ones built for the army, but to worship the Lord. And that's going to be very important. Because at the center of Israel, at the center of their army has to be who? Worship of God. The battle has to be won spiritually and physically. See, the two go together. And so we're going to see the accounting of the Levites next week, okay? All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Help us, I pray, to digest all these different details, Lord, and to recognize, even though sometimes it's hard to get through, to recognize that, Lord, you account for every man that goes to war because that's your nature Lord one or a thousand it's all they're all important to you Lord and so I just pray Lord that we would receive that word Lord that even though there's millions upon millions billions of people throughout the ages that have called upon the name of the Lord that you know each one individually you know them by name you account for them even through the cross of Calvary, Lord. And so help us to receive these details and to be able to take a step back and see the bigger picture as well, Lord. That you're a God of detail, that you know each person that you've created, you know each heart, and you have a purpose and a plan for them to further the kingdom. And so I pray, Lord, as we marshal through these chapters and numbers that you would anoint our time together that you would help us to understand just this portion of the bible as a whole but then help us to apply it to our own lives as well by your spirit i ask these things in jesus name amen shall we stand